Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, I am here today with a uh, video titled, What is a Star Note? Now, if you are a coin or currency collector, you probably already know. Probably. Um, maybe you know lots about them, maybe you know a little or just a tiny bit, and uh, if you're not that into coins and currency, maybe you don't know. So, um, look at this kind of as a base, like a very basic video on what are star notes. So anyway, as you probably know, uh, when the U.S. prints currency, um, Bureau of Engraving and Printing, they print lots and lots and lots and lots of money. And when they're printing that money, errors happen. Now, as you also know, um, every bill we have, no matter the denomination, the year, has a unique serial number. When something happens with that bill, like maybe there was a cutting error, an inking error, whatever, they can't just add another bill in with that serial number because then you'd have two bills with that same number. So can't let that happen. So what they do to basically change it numerically is they take that bill with that serial number and they put a star after it. Um, let's show you this example here. So this is a, let's see, 1963 um, $1 bill star note. So as you can see right there, we have 09580105 followed by a star. So that means that the original note was the same number, just didn't have that star at the end. Some type of tragedy happened to that bill, some kind of an error, and voila, voila, they put a star at the end and now it's a totally different number and they put that into circulation. So basically the star it could also be called a replacement note because it replaced the original the original um, bill that had the same like basic uh, serial number on it. Now, I just took out like kind of a very, very quick representation. These aren't like the prettiest or the best ones I have. Um, I Some people don't think too much of star notes. Some people really enjoy them. Um, sometimes when I find star notes, they are $1 bills. They have been well circulated. They're not really worth that much more than um, uh, than the face value. So if you find like a you know a new one dollar star note and it looks like it's been passed around quite a bit, you know maybe you can go on eBay and you know sell it for a buck fifty and end up with nothing after fees. But you know it's not it's not a huge deal financially. I just think it's a cool thing. Plus if you get a lot of them, sometimes you can sell them in bulk. Now other times when you get star notes, they can be a pretty big deal. Um, I'll get this out of the way first. There's a website called uh, MyCurrencyCollection.com, and they have this section on there called Star Note Lookup. And you can go on MyCurrencyCollection.com, and then what you do is you put that it's the twenty dollar denomination. You put that the you put the year down. So for this one would be two thousand nine, I believe. And then you put the uh, serial number, so JK00004574, and you have to put that star in. When you do that, it's going to give you um, a, the size of a print run. Now, mo most of the time when you find a star note, it's going to be part of like a $3.2 million print run. That is a very um, common size print run, and that means there's a whole heck of a lot of them. So let's say you find a particular bill, like say a $1 bill with a $3.2 million print run. It's pretty common. It'll be your least valuable one. But then you might find some, there's, there's certain numbers that you see more of, like sometimes you'll see some that are a little over a million. Those also aren't super great, but obviously they are like three times better than the 3.2 million ones. Um, sometimes, like this one right here that I just showed you, um, I put stickers on the back when I get them, when I check the print runs. This one has a print run of 640,000. Uh, now this isn't a super rare one, but it's not a bad one to have. Uh, I don't think anyone will be throwing it back if they found it in circulation. So pretty cool, 640,000 um, print run. So it's about one-fifth of your typical size print run. Again, not super rare, but not bad either. And then there are some that are 320,000, 160,000. I think there's actually a couple that are just down to like 20,000 20, or something. I think I saw, I had one that was like 64,000. So as you, you can tell, the print runs can get pretty tiny. Uh, and in f uh, affect the value. So like with regular currency, um, you know, the, the same things apply. Like this serial number is a little bit better. It's not a super low serial number, but it has four leading zeros. 
Um, now it would be a lot better if it had five or six leading zeros, but it's better than your typical 20. Plus it has the 640,000 print run. So this would be more, more than your typical $20 star note. You know, your typical $20 star note that has the same amount of circulation and just kind of a run of the mill print number and uh, print, oh, excuse me, serial number and print run might only be worth like maybe, you know, some people might not want to buy it at all. Some people might give you, you know, a couple of bucks more. Like, you know, maybe it'll give you like 22 for it or something. With this one, you could probably get a little more than that because, again, it's the, it has the four leading zeros and the $640,000 print run. You're not going to be able to use that money to put the down payment on the house unless you have a whole heck of a lot of other $20 builds, but it's definitely worth more than face value. Um, the other thing is, as you notice, I have the $20 bill, which is pretty new. I have this, the $1 bill from the 60s, and I have these uh, US, um, U.S. notes from the 50s and 60s. And as you can tell, they also have stars right here. These are pretty worn, but I kind of like to keep them in similar type holders just for, um, you know, just to kind of keep everything kind of similar and the same. This one's a 53C, and as you can tell, it is the star note. Now, with some of these older ones, they are a little less likely to be found just because a lot of these builds are out of, haven't been in circulation in quite some time. Uh, so they've kind of, you know, disappeared. Uh, the other interesting thing about Star Notes is this has been going on for a whole heck of a long time. I'm not sure exactly when the practice started, but it did go back to the, um, it did go back to uh, the 19th century. Me, yes, the 19th century in the 1800s, there were actually builds with Star Notes on them. So it is a, a pretty um, well-established thing that, that they were doing years ago. Um, like I said, I, you know, I was watching one... I think the reason why I'm doing this is I was watching a um, pretty well-known coin, cha coin channel. And uh, he was kind of poo-pooing star notes. He's like, oh yeah, unless they're a, they a, uh, a low print run, because I, I just kind of get rid of them. Like he just puts them back in. And I think that's really stupid. Now, if you're dealing with $100 star notes... I can understand that because let's say you have a hundred dollar star note and it's a rare hundred dollar star note. Well, that's worth a lot more than a hundred bucks. But if you have a really common hundred dollar star note, well, maybe somebody will give you a hundred and five or a hundred and six for it. But try putting it on eBay. If you have a store, they're going to take nine percent. If you, um, you know, you don't have a store, it's going to be thirteen percent. You got to kind of get substantial enough so that you're making money. And it's probably not going to get it for you. And plus, you've got 100 bucks tied up. Now, with $1 bills and $2 bills, it's not that big a deal to keep a $1 bill. I will never put a $1 star note back into circulation. I don't care how common it is. I don't care if the condition is super, super lousy. I'm still keeping it because I think worst case scenario, it's worth a little bit over a dollar. I think somebody would pay a little over a dollar. Will they pay a buck 25, a buck 50? I don't know. But it's more than that. Put a hundred of them together, and then you got something. Maybe you could sell them for 120, 150, 200, depending on condition. Who knows? But it's something you could put into a lot. It's also something I think that's pretty interesting, at least as a conversation piece, because again, a lot of people don't even notice these things. They don't know they exist. And it's also a pretty fun thing to do. Uh, I've done this on occasion where I'll go to the bank and I'll get like, a, you know, $100 of uh, $1 bills, go through the $101 bills, and I'll look for certain serial numbers, I'll look for star notes, all kinds of stuff. And I, usually when I do that, I end up with nothing. I don't think I've ever actually gone and get a strap of, a strap of ones and, and found anything. I usually tend to find them just, just from luck, you know, go to Wendy's, get some money back, there's a star note. Go to the ATM, get some money to pay the bills, there's a star note. So that's usually with my luck. It's like one of those things where uh, you tend to find them, at least on my, my part, um, when you least expect them. So if you are not aware that these things exist, uh, I would encourage you to, you know, check your money. It could be an easy way for you to make a few bucks, or it could be an easy way for you to add to your assets. Because, I mean, think about it. Let's say you find, you find a particular note and uh, it's a star note, and it's kind of a rare one. Well, guess what? That one dollar you have, maybe it's worth 20 or $30. Maybe it's also got a low serial number, um, you know, and it, it's worth even more money than that. So, you know, it's a good way to kind of pick up some, um, you know, extra asset value, uh, maybe make a few bucks on the side, 
and all you're really doing is just getting your change right when you go to a store rifle through it a little bit and and you're looking for stars and the other thing and I'll probably bring this up another time is uh, also to look at serial numbers um, with like again with the serial numbers sometimes if they're low numbers like you know they have five or six leading zeros uh, or if they're all the same number or they're just two numbers like you know all ones and fives or all twos and sixes or something uh, interesting patterns repeating patterns I mean they can be worth a little extra money so you know if you're not checking this stuff it, it might, might be going through your hands and you're missing a chance to either add to your collection or make a few bucks so that's all I have now uh, if you didn't know about these and you got interested I'm glad I could help you find a maybe a new little mini hobby have a good one I'll talk to you later